Hello storytellers, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Lauren. I'm an actress, storyteller and teacher who has a big love for Disney, Harry Potter, fantasy, fandoms, gaming, all sorts. Um, and today I'm going to do a little review of our trip that we went on in December over the Christmas holidays, over actual Christmas day. And I'm going to go through all the items I bought, which actually, I was pretty well behaved. So, our Disneyland Paris trip for Christmas, if you haven't seen the video already, which I'm going to link above, um, it's a long one. <laughs> it's the first long one. Again, give me feedback, guys. I want to know, do you like it, not like it? Um, it didn't go quite to plan. Understatement of the century. Um... But we had an amazing time. I got to spend Christmas Day in Disneyland with my fiance and my friends. It was great. Very merry, lots of laughter. It wasn't as cold as I expected, which I was happy about because I, I get cold quite easy for me to say it's not that cold. It's a pretty big thing. I don't seem to regulate heat very well. I'm either really cold or really hot. Um, yeah, so we went via Eurotunnel, which I highly recommend. I think it's the best form of transport to get you to Paris. I also love the ferry because obviously you now you get to be on a boat. I love boats. If you haven't, if you've not been following, I genuinely love boats quite a lot. And um, although that is lovely, it does add on like three hours to your journey. So if you're going for a short period of time. I don't necessarily think it's the best route just because it adds time on to travel. So we went Eurotunnel really smoothly. We had no problems checking in, checking out. On the way home, there were some delays, but there's always delays in Calais. Just a heads up. I've done this a few times now. There's always delays at Calais. Um, a hotel we stayed at the Radisson Blue was beautiful, really clean. A little bit too warm, like Dan doesn't sleep in pyjamas, so he was fine, but as me, I like to wear something. I was sweating. So, heads up, don't bring fluffy fleecy pyjamas, even though it's winter, if you're staying at a Radisson or really any of the hotels for Disneyland. I always find all the hotels in the Disneyland area are always very warm. The hotel we stayed in <laughs> uh, for our final few nights that wasn't as warm that was like a nice temperature for me but dan got quite chilly so yeah disneyland ones seem to be warm but yeah the cast members were helpful as always the vibe was really good the parades were great i would say i feel like there wasn't a lot going on for christmas not just on christmas day because on christmas day i know and i expect them to do a little less because less cast members gonna be in the park things like that but it just felt like they didn't really celebrate the christmas season that much like there's a parade but the fireworks at the end they're not christmas this year they are disney dreams which i believe they bought back from a few years ago um although loved it first time seeing it i absolutely adored it they had brave in there um it did kind of feel like it's christmas here some decorations and that was it um, and the Christmas parade itself didn't feel as magical as it did last year when I went. Last year when I went, it actually felt like there was a lot of characters in winter wear and Christmas wear. This year it just felt like there was a lot less people, as in like characters and cast members and yeah. So they could ramp up the Christmas. I agree with Dan, like it's Disney, you kind of expect them to go big. Um, and they didn't. I'm intrigued to see what it would be like in one of the other parks. Maybe in America where like everything is over the top. Um, heads up, Dan. That's a little thing I would like to do is now do the American parks on Christmas Day and compare them. I want him to come with me, obviously. Um, yeah, so the trip was really, really good. We had a great time. I do recommend going across the Christmas Day, Boxing Day period. Christmas Day, it wasn't that busy. I think the longest queue we had for a ride was 40 minutes. Other than the fact that Big Thunder and Space Mountain kept crashing and going down. So we never got to go on it when I was with my friend Steph. 
Um, we did manage to do Big Thunder. But Boxing Day, there were big queues, like a proper, it's a proper full on day. But Christmas Day, that was really nice. That was a nice level of people. So if you are worried about crowds, Christmas Day is actually a pretty good day to go for it. Yeah, um, I did want Dan to be here to do a review with me, um, but he's working for quite a while now and he wouldn't be available to be here to film. And I want to get this video out because I want it to be, you know, around the Christmas period, relevant. Um, but when I spoke to him, he did say like, he actually felt like he was getting more into the Disney magic this time. He sort of let himself get more invested in it and enjoy it. Um, just like as an observation of him in the parks, like as we were going around debating what to do, like he came up with a lot more ideas of what we should do next. He had a lot of suggestions. He even at one point said, I really want to do this. And so he definitely got more into it. I think he enjoyed himself a lot more this time than he did in April. I'm so happy. Um, he has made it very clear that he has no intention of going back with me for a long, long time. I think, if I'm honest, the next Disney park I'll get him in is Japan. Um, we're currently... We're do we're currently planning our wedding, which is September this year. But our honeymoon we want to do in Japan. So once the wedding's done, we're going to start saving. And all of like, you know, like wedding gifts would have been like, don't give buy us anything. Just give us money to go towards our Japan trip. And the idea is that we're going to do like three to four weeks in Japan. Travel, like get there, rent a car and just travel all the way around the island. Yeah. Uh, so I've got a feeling that'll probably be the next time I get him in there. And even then I really agreed that I'd want to do a minimum of three days in the Disney parks. Because they have two parks in Japan. Um, but he made it clear that he'd probably want to do both parks and then he's done. So he'll probably come for two days and I'll do a third on my own. And he can go off and do something football themed on his own. So yeah, that's the next time I'll probably get him in a Disney park. But <laughs> wait and see because I managed to get him into Disneyland Paris again. So yeah, it was a five out of five trip even with the chaos that ensued on the last two days um i do do recommend it just as dan said in the vlog check check your cover if you're driving make sure you have got a solid strong policy before you drive to france be it either already on your car insurance or on the insurance you've taken out as travel insurance, like make sure you are 100% protected. That's my main advice. Um, what did I buy? Let's go through it. We'll do Christmas things first. I only got one thing that wasn't Christmas. Mm, I mean the pin. Okay, I've got a few things that weren't Christmas themed. I'm gonna do pins first because if you haven't seen before on my channel, I'm a big pin collector. I have a very small collection, but I, every time I go, I want to buy pins. When I was in America, <laughs> uh, I went a bit overboard and I bought a lot. Uh, I've done less this time. Paris don't update their pins that often, and I find a lot of their pins are very generic. And I'm like, no, I'm looking for pins for specific things. Um, so first of all, I did get the Christmas pin, which is in kind of this like, sort of, I call it like 1950s, um, oh, what's it called? The like Jetson style animation. So it's kind of modern vintage, which is, you know, not possible because it's either vintage or something, but it's kind of like a modern vintage. Um, and it looks just like that. It's got Minnie and Mickey, red and green with some presents. I do have to say, I love Minnie's dress. Um, I don't have any Christmas pins. Like not a single one. So this is my first. I have a lot of Halloween pins, uh, but not Christmas pins. So yeah, this was orange. If I remember rightly, orange was around 10 euro. I know that the rosy pink color is 13 euros. So I wanna say this was around 10. Uh, I also managed to find a Coco one, which says seize the moment and it's all in silver. 
Coco is one of mine and Dan's favourite films. Um, I just, if you haven't seen it, go watch it. It will make you cry. You will cry a lot. As with most Pixar films at this point, but I, I just, yeah, I really like this one. I like the fact that it's a big chunk in silver with just his face in colour. Um, and if you've seen the film, you'll understand why that's slightly ironic. Um, what I would say though is it kind of looks a little bit like a sheriff's badge, which is the only thing I'm not a huge fan of. But again, I don't have any cocoa pins and the cocoa pins they do are always not many there and not that good. Um, so I took a risk, I've got this one. Again, this is orange, so I want to say this is around 10 euro. Uh, Again, this is orange. This is one from Beauty and the Beast or La Belle et la Bête. So it's got Belle on there with Mrs. Potts and Chip and some books. Again, Beauty and the Beast, my favourite Disney film of all time. And I'm slowly developing a collection of pins from it. Um, and I just really like that one. I. I find a lot of the pins are either her in her blue like provincial dress or it's her in her yellowy gold one where she's really fancy but my favourite scene in the whole of it is when she's in the pink dress with the red cape so I want to try and get some more pins with her in the outfit but that being said I love her in her yellow dress I just I love the aesthetic of Beauty and the Beast Mwah. chef's kiss uh, and then I bought this one. I've eyed this pin up so many times and I always say I'm not gonna buy it because it's quite a hefty pin. Uh, it's double-sided. Double it is rose, so this was more expensive. This is a Disneyland Paris pin. So it's got some of their major attractions in silver with the big banner at the bottom and like a glittery pink that says Disneyland Paris. Um, I'm being realistic in the fact that I know that over the next few years I'm potentially not going to get to go back to Paris as much as I would want to. My annual pass expires in April, but with the changes they've made to the annual passes and the systems and the fact they've increased it by 200 euro, it just makes it impossible right now for me to join in or to validate the changes they've made. If you're not aware, I'll link a video above fully explaining those changes to the annual pass system. But essentially, we've lost nearly all our perks, all the ones that we wanted. They increased the price and they said they're gonna do more events instead. So you'll get more events added for you to go to. But from experience, all of these annual pass events I've ever been to have been awful just like really badly managed no communication organized very last minute even though they've had months to get it ready and all of them are during the week when i'm working because as a teacher i only get weekends off and obviously i'm not complaining about that by the way before anyone goes you're a teacher you get loads of time off i do i do that's not the complaint i'm making it's that if you're going to do an event and it's on a Thursday in the middle of the week when it's not half term, I can't go. But I also know the majority of people, not so, but the majority of people will work Monday to Friday, not necessarily nine to five anymore, it's more like nine till seven. Um, but it's gonna make that incredibly difficult for them to try and get time off work. And so it, it feels like they've, kind of made it so only people in their country can go anyone who's sort of the outer parts of france and europe and us it's made it a little bit more difficult so i've accepted that i'm not going to have I'm not going to be able to renew it um but i have got my trip for my hindu in may so that will probably be my last trip to disneyland paris that i know of for quite some time it's actually my, I've only got two holidays booked this year and that is the, the last of the two. I already know me and Dan wanna go away somewhere in the 60th holidays just before we get married. 
and we're trying to book a mini moon as well to do something um but yeah so i accepted that it might be one of my last trips so i got the big pin i've always eyed up no because i've loved having my annual pass for the past what 2019 2020 one two three six years Damn. i've loved it um I might try and sneak in an extra trip just before it expires but anyway I got that to commemorate the fact that it's the last Christmas stuff if you've watched the video you will recognize some of this I'm just gonna pull fluff off of it but I did buy the Christmas bucket hat I slightly regret this now because and there's many reasons because number one it does have a funny shape number two the material isn't high quality the fur is but the velvet is really low quality velvet the ears are sewn slightly funny so it sits funny on my head but also i don't know if i'm ever going to be back in the disney parks at christmas and i don't really see me wearing this around the house at christmas so it was a novelty buy that I wore for two days and I don't know if I'll wear again. And I want to say that's the only thing I've done this for, but there's been a few times where I've bought stuff from Disney and I've got home and gone. I'm never going to use that again. I bought a big fluffy pink hat when I went with my friend Elspeth. I took it for my next trip with Pippa. And I remember wearing it and then realizing that I just, it's not me. A big fluffy pink hat with ears and a big bow and like it's not I've never once taken it back I bought my plain black one uh, when I went last year for Christmas and I wear that all the time because it's I'm the little logo at the front that says Disneyland Paris like it's completely black and subtle so novelty item slightly regret buying it I want to say this was around 19 euro 20 euro I don't know because I took the tab off and I wore it it is very cosy. I just can't see me using it again. We'll see. Um, sort my hair out. I did also buy these ears. I've seen these ears a few times over the past few years at Disney. And the first few times I'd seen it, I was like, hmm, I'm not gonna buy it. I don't need it it's not the highest quality and again I stand by it's not the highest quality like you can see the hot glue but I did decide to treat myself and get them because it's Christmas so I got these ones I love the bow more than I love the actual ears um the white glitter it's like an iridescent -y kind of glitter so it comes it makes it go a little pink but, and I don't know if it's going to come from camera, it's more so at the back. Oh, and a little bit at the front. You can see where they have hot glued this together. Which, don't get me wrong, that is how you'd make a pair of mini ears. But if I'm paying Disney prices, I don't want to be able to see where the glue has been put down. You should be, if you're making me pay, what, I think this was 23 euro? If you're going to make me pay like a, a big amount of euros for this it has got to be good now i haven't got them near me they're actually over there in a box because we're packing at the moment to move house because we're actually moving it's happening it's happening in three days three days from filming um by the time this goes out i, I, will, I will have a house and be in the middle of moving um but i got those on etsy and again I know that they're going to be made partly sewn, partly hot glued. You would not tell that that is hot glued together. And it cost me less than these. Actually, it probably cost me about the same. But this is the point. Disney, you're meant to be providing me with quality product. I love this. I'm glad I bought them. I will, these I will take to the parks around Christmas time if I go again. But like quality disney it's just gone past few years um i then also got 
just sorting her out because she's not again not the best quality and i'm it's becoming a habit now i'm seeing with some of the disney products um i got a treat myself and i got myself a christmas mini mouse i did go looking for the matching mickey and i could not find it anywhere they had hundreds of her none of him but this is my christmas mini whose tops all rolled up at the back so she has a stripy bow. Again, the fabric quality is really poor. Um, the velvet on her outfit is slightly better. It's rougher because it's actually, you probably can't see it's got sparkles in the skirt. Um, the stitching, so far from what I can see in like the embroidery is really good, but it just feels like some of the, some of the fabrics they're picking are not, not the highest of quality um yeah and again she was 30 euro she's quite small in comparison to some of my other Minnie Mouse's including like the collections um Minnie Mouse main attraction it's around the same price and she's half the size <sighs> But I love her. I don't have any Christmas plushes. And when we've got the house, I like the idea of having my box of my Christmas stuff, box of my Easter stuff, a box of my Halloween stuff, and I can get it out the loft and I can decorate per season. So I wanted her so she could be like our couch. Couch Christmas Disney. So I'm glad I bought her. I am glad I bought her. She will get quite a lot of use. Um, Although unfortunately she has already been inside a she's been inside the suitcase I'm packing all my teddies in. Um so she's now got bits of fluff all over as well. But yeah, very cute. Very cute. Just a bit expensive for the quality. Um two more things. I didn't buy this. Daniel bought this for me. I started to wrap this up to pack and then remembered I had to film this video. So you're about to hear the sound of sellotape on bubble wrap and I'm really sorry put more sellotape on than I thought. So the reason why it's bubble wrapped is it is a mug. I've been wanting a Christmas mug for a long time because, well, I, d I had one. I had a snowman one, he had a little hat, like to keep the steam in and yeah, he broke. I have had him since I was about 14. So I have had him 16 years and he broke last Christmas. I put went to put hot water in to make a cup of tea and he just cracked all down the edge. And I was like, I knew it was coming because you could see the cracks on the back of the ceramic. But yeah, it finally went. Um, then he got binned. So I wanted another one and I have i haven't found anything I've liked all Christmas. This again is done in that kind of vintage Disney style and it comes with a coaster. So I haven't taken it out of the box. I will in a minute, but that's what it looks like in the box. The box is really lovely. Um, I love it with like the Mickey and the Minnie on the front. Um, but on the coaster you've got Dumbo, Stitch, Alice and the Cheshire Cat. Now I'm going to be honest, the coaster gives me nightmares slightly. Again, the quality of what's been made is not what I would associate with being Disney's level of quality that they have had in the past years or so. But the mug, the mug I like. The mug was the more important part and they didn't have any like singular Christmas mugs. So we go with it. So here's the mug. Oh, it's got Donald on, thank. Although, it might be because he's white, but they've made Donald duck, Daisy duck, and Huey's eyes are green, not white, but I think it might be because their fur is white, because no one else has got it. Peter Pan's eyes are the same colour as his skin, so are Simba's. Okay, so there's there's some printing that's questionable. But this is the mug. Which has a mark on it that won't come off. Again, quality from Disney is becoming a major issue. I'm sure with a clean, it will be fine. But yeah, you've got Goofy with the presents, Bambi, Thumper, Minnie, Mickey with the tree, Chip and Joe with like a cookie of a tree that they've like munched through. 
Pluto is obviously eyeing them up. Simba's on there with a wreath around his head on top of some presents. You've got Peter Pan with some presents. You've got this outline of the castle in green. I feel like I'd prefer it if the castle was in a different colour. Maybe like a white. Because it's green on green. Uh, and then coming around you've got Daisy and Donald holding like a puppet toy. Um, and the other ducks are laughing at it. And again, wrapping back round, you've got Bambi and Thumper again. It does annoy me a little bit that you get Bambi and Thumper twice, but I get the idea is that it's meant to loop round. So this would be like a all round image. Um, and it's just plain white on the inside. And it's got the Disney logo at the bottom. So yeah, it does, it does the job. It's a really lovely Christmas mug. I'm glad Dan bought me it. I really appreciate it. Thank you, baby. Oh, that's weird. I went to pull the coaster out, which I've not touched. Oh, the figurines are all rubbery and they move. I, went, I assumed it would be solid because, you know, it's a coaster. Oh. Oh, I don't like it. Oh, it's all plastic, okay. So that's the bottom. This is the coaster, which is completely rubber. So what made me go, uh, was I went to pick him up and he, Yeah, I don't like it. I've come to the conclusion I really don't like it. Um, I'm still gonna use it. So you've got Dumbo, Stitch, Alice and the Cheshire Cat. It's Alice and the Cheshire Cat that weird me out the most, which is a shame because Alice in Wonderland, again, is one of my favorite films. I've loved the story since I was a little girl. Um, it's thick. It's got some weight to it. But the quality of this, like, it's just, it's naff. Um, and this was 25 euro. So <sighs> that was what was presented. Nice presentation. I don't see how the coaster connects with the mug so much um yeah so it's fair to say i'll probably get this out at christmas and have it on display i'll probably put a candle or something on it rather than my mug i will use my mug um yeah that's really naff this is not dishwasher or microwaveable safe is this one? This is both. This is dishwasher and microwave safe. So yeah, Disney has been making some choices with their merch. Uh, I'm actually gonna keep it out of the box because it's easier to wrap them. Um, I'm not gonna keep the box because I need to stop hoarding things, but I am going to bubble wrap that mug back together shortly. Or I could use it like one time before I pack it away. I can sense a hot chocolate brewing. Um, I bought one more thing. And this is probably the thing I'm the most excited about, but was the most risky. I had not seen the film Wish. I was meant to see it the day after we were meant to get back from France. And if you've seen the vlog, you'll understand what that means. So I bought the Wishes because I just thought they looked lovely. I just love them. Now, luckily I really liked the film. I've got opinions and there will be a vlog with my opinions on that film coming up in the next week or two. Um, yeah. They are so cute. The star is actually, like that's not rubber, that's solid. The sequins, a little harsh on the head. I have worn them already when I was in the cinema. The embroidery. Oh, it's not embroidery. The stars look like they could be embroidery, but they are actually stuck on. The material quality of this is really strong. The only thing I would say, and um, you can see where I've cut it, again, 
where's my other ears? Like, not necessary. Like, Disney. Like, I don't need a tail. I don't need a receipt. And it's not just like one. There's what, three? Yeah, three all this long. All attached, and then a little one. You've already got the logo on here. You don't need this. We don't want this. So I had to cut it off of this one. Um, they are really cute. They are the scratchy crunchy kind. So if that's something that might wind you up, just be aware. This again, I wanna say was the same as these and these were both around the sort of 25 to 30 euro mark. Um, you can't see the hot glue on this like the other ones you can see some of the stitching like there's a tiny little bit at the back where you can see where the bow has been sewn in it's not the end of the world so yeah i really love these and a review of the movie will be coming up shortly that's it i've waffled on long enough um i'm so glad i got to do this trip and i'm so glad i got to do it with my friends and with daniel i absolutely loved it um there's n I was gonna say there's nothing I'd change about it, but we all know that's a lie. Um, no, there's out of the trip of what we had planned, there is nothing I would have done different. We did a lot of the rides, Dan got to do some of the rides he hadn't done before. And so it was a very relaxed trip, less of a focus on ride, 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 ride. So he got to see everything. It was more right, we can really enjoy it this time we can see this, we can do that, we can take our time walking down Main Street, like we were in no rush to achieve anything. So it was lovely. Oh wait, I forgot, oh, it's in the vlog. I got the champagne flute, um, I'll insert some footage here of me using it, but I bought the champagne flute with champagne, which I wanna say was 22 euros each, I got mine and Steph's. Um, so I paid 44 euros for the two of them. The champagne itself was so lovely. That was good quality champagne and you could tell it was. Um, and the flute itself, because it's lightweight plastic, it's very easy to pack and bring home. So I have got that at home in my cupboard with my 30th anniversary one. If you got this far, thank you so much for watching. Did you like what I bought? Have you noticed the same quality issues with the stuff you're buying from Disney or the parks? When's your next trip? have a conversation with me in the comments. Remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.